Hey there folks, it's just me, once again, your friendly neighborhood, Walter Shepard. Um, sorry about my last um, upload. I was a little, um, I was a little disappointed um, in, in, in seeing that. Um, yet again, in seeing all that uh, annual thing. But again, um, we'll forget all about that. Uh, this is not about, um, uh, it is not about that. This is about something totally different. Um, this is something for uh, for your new subscribers, your new viewers. Um, the Lord has been giving me visions of um, visions and dreams of a whole bunch of different things, but mainly about um, the life and times during the thousand years of peace. Um, that is the uh, um, the chunk of time that comes right after the tribulation period. Um, there's still a couple of stages of this uh, of this earth to go that we will experience. Um, and uh, since '96, um, when I really started researching um, these visions that were coming into my head, I was able to write them all down. And I uh, I don't seem to have them handy, and I never thought about uh, 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 bringing them out yet. But maybe I'll show them again in in another video. <clears throat> but since '96, I have been writing um, this novel. Uh, about life and time during the thousand years of peace. I just recently, um, yet again, um, attempted the final draft. But again, life um, life led me elsewhere, um, which is good because I believe through life circumstances and through the things that I experience with my fellow servants, um, it gives me more depth and insight and uh, allows me to do more research about life and time during the thousand years of peace, um, because we've still got we've still got a whole lot of life to live, and there's and there's a whole lot of things, uh, um, a whole lot of better things to do, a whole lot more things to do, and life and times on Earth during the thousand years of peace is going to be so much easier. It's going to be so much uh, uh, so much more fun and so much more relaxing, um, because we won't have the hindrance of of, of Satan. Um, um, picking on us and, 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 and tempting us to do sin and we won't have our own sinful nature. Um, all of our problems that we have in life, um, we can't always blame on, we can't always blame on the devil. The devil doesn't always make us do it. Um, for the most part, um, those little imps and demons that, 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 that run around bothering most people, there are some people they don't bother because um, uh, because we human beings sometimes we are our own worst enemies. Sometimes we pick on ourselves. Sometimes um, sometimes the, the 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 darker spirits out there they don't need to touch certain people because those certain people they pick on themselves so much that they keep themselves down. They keep themselves oppressed. So uh, so we can't always blame the enemy for the problems that we have now because there's a lot of stuff that we can overcome. And when we overcome them, um, we become that much stronger, especially if, um, if, 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 if we have the Lord in our life, if we're using the Lord, if we're relying on His strength, if we're relying on His power, if we're relying on the Holy Spirit within us to help teach us what's in the Word, to help us to deal with what's in real life, um, our everyday struggles with, uh, with, 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 with bills and education and the public and family and friends and relationships and finances and all those things that um, we heavy on everybody around the world we've got all these all these major responsibilities that, uh, that 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 really keep us from enjoying life to the fullest but we deal with them and we overcome them and um, if you're a, a, in a good relationship with the Lord um, you know more than enough to give all your problems to him to give all your anxieties to the Lord because he will look after them through you he will help you to know um, where your priorities are and what your priorities should be and what you should be focusing on day to day in order to overcome the challenges of our daily responsibilities in our lives. And so when we do that, um, we gain a greater presence of, uh, um, or a, a, a greater position of authority that can be used during the thousand years of peace. So everything that we've learned to overcome, all the challenges in this um, in this difficult life, um, they will teach us. They, they will help us to be more Christ-like. They develop um, character. Um, patience develop perseverance, perfect perseverance, character, and so on and so on. So everything that we go through, all the hard stuff that really sucks in life, um, God has allowed it into your life because He knows you can overcome it and He knows you will grow stronger um, because of it. 
um, everybody hates trials and, and, and tribulations and, 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 and all those difficult challenges when they come up because they knew and because they're new and they're very over, uh, overwhelming and they seem very overpowering because we've never had to face them on that level before. But when we overcome it, uh, we grow that much stronger in order to face the next one, which seems so overpowering, but it's much easier to handle. So when you, uh, when you give all your daily problems to the Lord, he helps you to, uh, he helps you to overcome them. He, he, he empowers you so that whenever more comes, they're just easier to handle. Uh, you just get stronger and stronger all the time. <clears throat> and so that, um, um, once the rapture happens and we get to heaven and, um, we go through the judgment seat of Christ and you get, uh, your, your, uh, you get appointed your positions of authority. Then after the tribulation period, um, after the battle of Armageddon, when um, Satan and all the Antichrist One World armies are in um, the Valley of Armageddon, they're not trying to destroy each other. The Battle of Armageddon is not mankind destroying mankind. Satan has got everybody there and the Antichrist has got everybody there, um, soldiers of 200 million or more, and their whole intent is to destroy Jerusalem. But at the same time, um, they also know, those, those that are in power, they also know that at the end of the tribulation period, Jesus is going to once more crack open the sky and he's going to ride down on his horse and all the angel armies behind him and even some of the servant armies behind him too. They're going to come riding down out of heaven. Uh, the blackness of space is going to be torn away so that you'll be able to see heaven's presence behind it. And heaven will seem so close, even though in our mind's eye, we'll know that there's thousands and millions of light years between earth and the edge of the universe. But once God breaks open all that dark matter at space and rolls it up like a curtain, we're going to see just how immense heaven really is and just how powerful God really is. And the, uh, the One World Army, um, those, those soldiers and the generals and all the leaders and the Antichrist and, 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 and all the presidents and everybody that is in power, every, every Luciferian leader that has prayed to Satan himself, um, that has uh, killed so many people during the tribulation period, they are going to finally see how much more powerful God and Jesus is than Satan. Because uh, the people that are in control right now, the one-worlders, the, the, the Bilderbergs, the Masons, and stuff like that, the most powerful families in the world, um, the heads of those households, um, the 13 most powerful men, they are Luciferians. They pray to Satan. They have their ceremonies around their pentagrams. And they have actually seen Satan with their own physical eyes. And um, Satan, uh, because he is, uh, appear, uh, can appear as an angel of light, looks something well beyond um, our, 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 our human knowledge. Um, he, he, he breaks off into the spiritual realm. So from the point of view of a human being, he is the most powerful thing, powerful thing that they've ever seen. That's why all these, all these Luciferian um, leaders, these one-worlders, are doing everything they can to bring about the Antichrist, um, to, to, to depopulate the planet, because they're taking orders from Satan. Because Satan has lied to them, and he has told them they can conquer the world, and um, they're the ones that Satan has convinced them that they can win the battle of Armageddon, and that they will come out the leaders. So that's what they're doing um, right now. They truly believe that um, they are going to win the battle with Jesus because um, as far as they're concerned um, God is absent God is not even around so they're not even concerned about God but at the end of the tribulation at the end or at, at the battle of Armageddon once God rolls away the, the blackness of space uh, all those powerful people with as much power and, and, and fame and money and riches as they've had, they are going to be so scared. They're going to be a, 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 a defecating in their underwear. Um, they're going to be releasing everything. They, they, uh, that's why it says on the, in, in, in the Bible, that all the mighty men in those days will 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 go into the mountains and they will they will they, they will beg the mountains to fall on them to hide them from 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 the wrath of God that is about to come. 
So at the end of the tribulation period, all these mighty people that are controlling the world right now, they're going to become cowering little people, and they will go into their into their um, into their uh, survival shelters, their bomb shelters. But at the end of the tribulation period, when Jesus comes down and wipes out all the demonic forces and all the forces of the Antichrist, and he totally starts over the planet, that's when God is going to reshape the planet. Again, that's when God is going to reshape the earth. And um, again, with the research that I've had, um, the Bible tells us, the Old Testament prophets tell us that um, <clears throat> the sun during that time, during the thousand years of peace, is going to burn seven times brighter than it is now. And the moon is going to shine seven times brighter. And from what I've seen in, in, in the visions that I've had over the, uh, the, the past few decades, is our sun is going to go through another stage of its existence. It's changing right now, and right now it's, in, it, it, it's having its own birth pangs. And its next stage of existence is it's going to um, become more powerful. It's going to be seven times more powerful. Whether it just increases its intensity and becomes more dense and more powerful, or whether it increases size, um, we have no idea. But from what I've seen, <clears throat> when it does change into um, a sun that's seven times more brighter, um, when that first does happen, it sends out a shock wave throughout the solar system um, that affects the first four planets, um, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Um, it changes their orbits. And it also changes the composition of each of, 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 each of those planets, too. But that's a whole other... Um, uh, that, that's a whole other video. Um, basically, when the sun increases, it creates a whole new Goldilocks zone uh, for, for, for all the planets, um, and, and, and so on and so on. But anyway, uh, this is not about that. So, when that shock wave first hits the Earth, it's going to totally um, shake everything. Everything that we've built is going to be totally torn down. Um, everybody on the face of the earth during the tribulation period, because again, there will be no innocent people. There will just be um, all those people that took the number of the beast, which makes them totally guilty, and so they will be going to hell. And then there will be the remnant of survivors that lived outside the system, the people that lived out there in the wilderness and did not take the number of the beast. They will survive the transition of the, the old earth, um, of the tribulation period, they will survive the transition um, of when it changes. Because when the entire planet changes, all the continents change, all the all, all the, the 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 placement of the water changes. Everything changes. Um, there will be more land than there is water. Um, all the lands will be connected. It will go back to being like it was in the days of of of, of Adam and Eve when the whole planet was 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 just one landmass you could walk around the entire planet you didn't need sailing ships to go across the oceans because there were no o oceans during that time the two major oceans that we have now are what is left over of the floodwaters uh, before the floodwaters they didn't have those two big oceans they had a lot of water here and there but there was much more landscape than there is now all the continents were all connected um, during the days of noah before the flood uh, but that's a whole other thing. So anyway, um, <clears throat> after that shock wave of the new sun, when it increases, when it, 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 when it um, expands or just uh, burns with more intensity, after the shock wave comes the heat wave. And that heat wave is what totally burns up um, the, everything on the planet Earth. It changes the compositions of, 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 of the other planets, um, whatever gases and, and, and elements they have in their atmosphere. Again, it changes everything. On Earth, it changes um, the composition of the planet in so much as it purifies everything. It burns off all the pollutants that mankind has, has, has created. It burns off all the nuclear radiation. So when the Earth starts over, it starts over brand new. It starts over pure. Um, God basically will compact the earth. Um, so it'll still weigh the same, but it'll just be a little bit smaller. It'll be more compacted. All, all the continents right now, all the cities right now, wherever there is a great deal of sin and perversion and corruption, um, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophets have seen the new earth change. And when the new earth changes, it's like 
um, all the landscapes everywhere are being covered with lava. Um, everything's melting um, as well. And at the same time, there are areas of the planet where God is um, is furrowing um, the entire earth. And if you've ever, if you've ever done any farming, um, when you start off in spring, um, all the ground is hard and it's compacted um, uh, that because of the winter snows and the winter freezes and stuff like that. So you have to break up the earth. You have to you have to loosen everything up. You have to take all the earth that's that's underneath that's fresh and rich and has all the nutrients and bring that underneath soil to the top. And all the topsoil that's all hardened that has all all the pollutants and everything that's going to be pushed underneath so basically that's what's going to be happening um, to the earth um, at the end of tribulation and the beginning of the thousand years of peace as everything sinful is going to disappear it's going to be plowed underground and all the fresh stuff that's underground is going to be brought up um, uh, to the surface um, all, all, all the water um, bodies are going to change um, the the Old Testament prophets tells us that the landscape that's at the bottom of the ocean um, is going to be brought up and it'll be filled with um, different kinds of life different kinds of seeds different kinds of uh, that, that uh, of, of whatever else that God has planned during the new earth and so during the, uh, the the thousand years of peace when God starts everything over um, the earth is going to have a whole new nature. Um, God is going to make his presence known on the planet earth. Um, it's, he's, he's not going to be hidden. Um, people who live during the thousand years of peace as, as the population grows, they're not going to need faith to know that there is a God. Um, his presence will be known. Everybody will automatically know that there is a God because um, to begin with, they can easily go to Jerusalem and see Jesus. They know they, they will know that Jesus is 100% man and he's 100% God too. And in their hearts and in their minds, as soon as they wake up in the morning, as soon as everybody wakes up in the morning, they will automatically know that there's a God, just like we automatically know that the sun is going to come up, that there's going to be clouds, that there's going to be air. We just automatically know that. And so during the thousand years of peace, that's going to be known to everybody. And the natural flesh and blood people, the people who have flesh and blood like we do now, the remnant of survivors who survived the great earth shake and survived the great um, earth bake, the, the great earth burn, um, that remnant of survivors will be about 5,000 people. I've talked about that before. Um, the servants of the Lord are going to take them to Jerusalem. They'll be judged and Jesus will place them wherever they are, um, wherever they will be during the thousand years of peace, where their families um, will grow in population and and the population of the thousand years of peace um, will grow from about 5,000 um, flesh and blood people to uh, about 15 billion flesh and blood people at the end of it. So during the thousand years of peace there's going to be three kinds of beings um, walking around um, the earth. Uh, first of all, there's going to be f the flesh and blood people. Um, um, they can get bruised. Um, they can be killed. Um, they will be just regular, ordinary people like uh, like like you and I are. But because the thousand years of peace is uh, is God restoring Eden to the planet Earth, um, the planet Earth, the environmental conditions are going to be looking after human beings um, much much better than it does now. So the lifespan of the ordinary flesh and blood people will go from to being um, the average um, 70 years that God has given us, um, 80, 90 um, if we're lucky, um, but 100 years at the most right now with our current medical knowledge. Um, 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 so during the thousand years of peace, people are no longer going to die um, uh, before they reach 100. Um, the Bible tells us that when or, or if a person does die at a hundred years old, they will be thought a teenager. And the uh, about the average lifespan of a flesh and blood person during the thousand years of peace will be about 300 years, um, 400 years if they're lucky. So um, a teenager, um, uh, uh, or, or, or um, the, the three stages that we have now, where, where we go from, from childhood to teenagehood to adulthood to senior citizen, that sort of thing, can be seen um, during the thousand years of peace with the flesh and blood people, but with those three or four categories broken up into um, a, a, a century long groups. So a senior citizen during the thousand years of peace will be someone who's approaching 400 years old. 
and um, a youth, a teenager moving into adulthood will be someone who's 100 years old moving into their 200 years old, and, um, and, and, and so on and so on. So there will be the flesh and blood people, and they will be much better looked after. I mean, I mean the, 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 the world that, that, that um, we're going to be creating, um, the world that Jesus is, is, is that's going to be developing, is it going to be running so much smoother than it is now? Um, because there won't be a monetary system. So anything that we have in our world right now that's attached to money, that's what brings in stress. That's what brings in um, all these various evils, it is the love of money, the greed for more money, the need to hoard, the need to be rich, the need to, 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 to be financially secure, and all these rich, greedy people and the corruption and all that's causing. And everything that's attached to money uh, has, has, has brought out um, a great deal of our, of our human sin nature. And so during the thousand years of peace, there won't be any money. So there's not going to be any banks. There won't be any any, any lawyers. There won't be any 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 loan companies, um, and there won't be any for for that sake too. There won't be any need for police forces either, because there will be no criminals. There will be no corruption. There'll be no political corruption, because everybody in office, everybody that is in um, uh, uh, that control of the general public in a position of authority will be a sinless, incorruptible servant of the Lord. The flesh and blood people, I'm sure they will have um, various positions of authority, what not here and there, but they will never be in control of a great amount of people because that, uh, that, that responsibility has been given to a servant of the Lord to become mayors or, 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 or leaders of a nation or um, leaders of community or whatnot. The, the, those positions are given to the incorruptible people um, that the Lord will appoint um, during the thousand years of peace. And as you know, um, with this new system, I can only keep talking. Um, so I can't uh, go answer the uh, phone now, but I'll, I'll let the answering machine get it. Usually it's just a sales bot and they don't... Uh, um, and they don't say anything. So, um, uh, what else was I going to talk about? Yes, um, so during the thousand years of peace, um, the three kinds of uh, life forms that will be walking around will be the flesh and blood people, um, and as, as, as well as you servants of the Lord with your glorified bodies, with your raptured, regenerated, rejuvenated bodies that will live forever, that will never die, you'll never get sick, you'll have control over nature, um, you can fly if you want, or you can ride in a car if you want, you can think yourself to heaven instantly, or think yourself to another part of the world if you wanted to. Uh, you could work um, for an entire year or a hundred years without ever going to sleep, just uh, 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week, just keep going. You never have to rest if you don't want to. Um, you never have to eat, and you, you, could, you could not eat for an entire century or for the whole thousand years of peace if you didn't want to eat. Your body won't require that, uh, the, 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 the same kind of energy or nourishment as a flesh and blood person does because you will be um, regenerated. You will have your physical human nature that was born in time and space, that will be totally um, spliced and married with the eternal nature that comes from um, being a part of heaven, that comes from being a part of all the, all the heavenly matter and the nature that is in heaven that you will be imbued with when the rapture happens. So um, the third uh, type of being that will be around during the thousand years of peace, again, will be angels. Um, angels will no longer need to be hidden like they are now. Um, angels, and they come in all different sizes. Some look just like ordinary people. Some are tall. Um, some angels have wings. Um, some angels are extremely tall. Um, they range in size from six footers to 30 footers, even 50 footers, and they, 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 they all perform different duties. They all have different things to do, um, and, and, and they will all still be helping mankind during the thousand years of peace as well as you servants of the Lord, all those people that have um, chosen or chosen in this life before the thousand years of peace to become builders and architects and designers or sculptors or whatever your natural skills and talents are, they will be put to use again during the thousand years of peace to help create a better society that flows. All the mistakes that we see in the world right now, we're learning from so that when we servants of the Lord, when we're raptured and we are 
back on the earth during the thousand years of peace, we will have learned from our mistakes. And we can say, okay, society doesn't need this sort of thing because that's just a hindrance. Society and, um, you know, can be guided this way because it'll make it that much easier. Or someone who plans highways and roadways to get from one city to the other. Um, the natural flesh and blood people are still going to need cars and vehicles and we can help design perfect roadways and perfect uh, travel systems and perfect vehicles that don't pollute, that um, don't uh, uh, that, that, uh, crash or kill people or harm people and whatnot. We can, we can help develop a global society that is far more efficient um, than it is now. And because we'll be working with God, when someone is going to build a town or a, 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 a a settlement that's eventually going to grow into a city, say after two centuries. <clears throat> right now, um, on this earth right now, uh, there's not many people um, building new cities. So there's not many people that are building a city that is going to be efficiently run. That would be way too expensive for any one country to build an entire new city that to begin with has nobody in it and then everybody moves into the city and they find out that it's really efficient. That is too impractical right now. Nobody could ever do that. But during the thousand years of peace when we don't have to worry about money or the cost and everybody is just enjoying the job that, um, that, that, that they enjoy doing with their natural skills and talents, um, if people on this earth now, okay that was my original point, uh, be, before the rapture, right now we have cities that they do get bigger, but they also get more crowded, and the roadways can't handle um, the denser population, so everything becomes that much more frantic on the roadways, and everything becomes that much more frantic on the sidewalks, because the sidewalks, originally when the city was built, they weren't built for, you know, 20 million people. They, they, they originally started off with 50,000 or, or, or a million, and then they grew up, but the inner core of the city was not built for 20 million people or whatever. Again, that's, a, that, that's an extreme example. But during the thousand years of peace, we won't have that problem because we'll be working with God and God knows the beginning and end of time all at the same time. He can see it all at the beginning. When someone is going to uh, be building a city that will hold 20 million people, God's going to say, okay, it'll start off in here. And so all the surrounding area around here, don't build anything on it yet because over the next century or two, it's going to be built up to the point where you will need to make roadways and apartment buildings and all sorts of other things that will house 20 million people, even though this little settlement is starting off with a dozen people or so. So because God is going to be helping us design these cities, everything's going to be running that much more efficiently. Space travel will be that much more efficient. Um, and because the compositions of the planets um, are going to be changing as well, um, there, there's going to be a lot of um, flesh and blood people that will move off of the earth and they will go um, found colonies and cities and, and construction um, places um, off earth on, on Mars um, or, 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 or even start um, industrial uh, complexes um, in order to get all the, uh, all the irons um, and all the gases out of the solar system in order to help build up um, the the earth in order to help make a more financial or, or not or, or make a more efficient system on the earth um, a, a a earth that um, is going to house by the end of it um, 15 billion people there are going to be some cities on the earth that are going to be um, holding a, a billion people and that kind of city is going to take a lot of iron and it's going to take a lot of concrete and it's going to take a lot of natural elements to keep it running. And so we're not going to be stripping the earth of all the elements and all the minerals and stuff like that. Uh, God has given us all those minerals and elements and, and irons and ores and gases out there in the solar system. That's what the asteroid belt is there for. So during the thousand years of peace, we'll be setting up systems where we can go get all that stuff that's in the solar system and then, and then, and then and refine it and manufacture it and then help it or, or, or help create um, a, a, a parts that can be used to help build cities on earth uh, build cities on Mars, um, or, or, or floating cities um, orbiting the Earth or orbiting the planets, or, or whatever. Again, 15 billion people are going to be scattered around, around the solar system. 
And I've always felt that um, there, uh, out of a total population of 15 billion, there will only be around you know 10 or 12 billion people that are actually on the Earth. The other two or three billion will be uh, working off Earth, um, or, or, or living on Mars, or living on the Moon, or or, or, or living on spaceships that are or orbiting Jupiter or Saturn, or living in in, 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 in in mining colonies to help mine the gases or mine the ores. That they they'll be all over the places. Like I said, I mean, Jesus is going to show that he can do so much more in just a thousand years than what Satan has done over the past 6,000 years. Satan has been watching Adam and Eve for, for almost 6,000 years now. And has he bothered to help mankind develop in, uh, a, 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 into um, a, a better state? Uh, not really. Satan has picked on mankind. Satan has hindered mankind. Satan has done everything he can to prove to God that he's not interested in helping to build up mankind, but to tear down and to destroy as much of mankind as possible. So during the last 6,000 years, if Satan wasn't around um, to be tempted by Satan, mankind still wouldn't have gotten um, as technologically advanced as they will during the thousand years of peace because mankind, as we are, we still have to deal with our sin nature. We, we are still bent towards rebellion. We are still bent towards um, selfishness. And people who live outside of God that have those particular um, parts of their nature, they don't know that they should be controlling it. They don't know about God or the fear of the Lord or stuff like that. So when they're giving into selfishness and when they're giving into in, into into rebellion or whatever, they're doing what their uh, sinful nature that we that we all inherited from Adam. They're just doing what they feel natural. And so I believe in even in six thousand years, if Satan wasn't around. I still don't believe mankind would be uh, much more technologically advanced than they are now because there will still be greedy people that see no benefit for going outside of the solar system or going outside of Earth and whatnot. Anyway, that's kind of a digression. Um, anyway, so during the thousand years of peace, society is going to be built up, uh, built up so that Jesus is going to prove that with with the help of his servants, with the help of of, of you out there, um, you you wise virgins, you prayer warriors, you 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 watchmen, um, all all you in the body of Christ, in the bride of Christ, um, we're going to be helping Jesus um, build uh, a, a, a a a a vacation planet basically, because it'll be totally stress-free. All the technology that we'll be um, inventing will be done for, for the leisure of mankind. Um, there, there, there will be no stress. Um, there will be no, 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 no bills or everything. Uh, the work day and um, everything will be done in order to, to relax. We build cars because we want to see the world. Um, we want to drive around the landscape um, because we enjoy. Um, some people like driving fast. Um, we build boats because we like being on, 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 on the water. We build airplanes because we like flying. We will be, be building spaceships because we want to go explore the solar system. And in doing all that, um, because Jesus' servants are involved, uh, there's not going to be any greed or corruption. There won't be any people holding patents or, 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 or trying to sell their invention to, to, to the highest bidder or trying to make the most money off their invention. Because again, that gets into greed. That gets, and, and, and that system is not going to be there. There won't be a system of greed. There will just be a system of people designing things, building things, inventing things in order to share it with other people so that they too can relax and just enjoy the planet um, so that we don't have to work um, a nine to five system where everybody's totally stressed out because we have so many deadlines and if this deadline doesn't happen then the company is going to go blah 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 that sort of thing's uh, uh, not going to be around during the thousand years of peace it'll just be um, life for the total enjoyment of life um, by the end of the thousand years of peace, um, if you wanted to look at it that way, everything on earth, everything that we build um, is going to be for, 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 for leisure, for exploration, for discovery, um, for relaxation. Earth will become the greatest vacation planet um, in the entire universe. 
and it'll be perfect by the time we get to the end of the thousand years of peace. Um, after Satan has tempted the last of the people and they're done away with, everything that we have built, everything that, we be, that will be built during the thousand years of peace, all the planes, um, all the automobiles, all the cars, all the spaceships, all the submarines, underwater vehicles, underground vehicles, all the buildings, the bridges, um, the, 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 the flying things, the, 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 the mile high, 10 mile high apartment buildings, everything, everything, everything that will be created during the thousand years of peace will be eternalized um, when God moves out of heaven and he moves the heavenly city onto the earth. He combines the nature of heaven um, with the nature of time and space and everything takes on a whole new nature. Um, you heard the Bible talk about the new heavens and the new earth. In the Old Testament, when they talk about the new heavens and the new earth, um, it's spelt in lowercase letters because they're referring to the new heavens and the new earth that will be the thousand years of peace. Because uh, during the thousand years of peace, not only will, there, will, will Eden be restored, but when you look up in the sky, you'll see um, not only different star patterns at night, but um, the sky will be so much more uh, vibrant than it is now. And you will see all sorts of different um, flying things. Um, you'll see angels, you'll see servants of the Lord, you'll see portals between earth and heaven opening up here and there, all kinds of angelic creatures, all the air vehicles that we will be building. When people look up into the sky, it'll be a whole new heavens there. It'll be way different than the heavens that we have now on this old earth the old heavens and the old earth that we live in right now, um, it, it's going to be totally be replaced. So during the thousand years of peace, yes, there will be new heavens and there will be a new earth. And then after the thousand years of peace, when the New Testament talks about the new heavens and the new earth, when God becomes a part of the earth, that's capitalized, a new heavens and the new earth. Uh, because not only will, 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 will the heavens, that is space change, and, 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 and the place where God has made his throne, that heaven, and all those other heavens that are a part of it, those heavens are all going to be changed too. They'll become part of the, th of, of, of the earth that is a thousand years of peace, where that was built up, and that'll become part of the time-space universe. And all that, again, we will have, once God moves down onto the earth, we will have not only a new earth, but new heavens as well. Because the Bible tells us that part of the new earth is that there won't be any sea anymore. There won't be any need um, for that kind of water. And there won't be any sun. The sun at the end of the thousand years of peace will have basically have burnt itself out and it will become a black hole. It will still um, have a place um, in the solar system. It'll still be a gravitational body but nothing um, harmful will ever happen. Anything or anyone that goes in there will be a servant of the Lord and thereby won't be bound by the laws of nature. So going in and out of black holes for a servant of the Lord pff, will be no big deal. But anyway, um, Revelation tells us that when God comes down and makes earth his home, um, the brightness of his being provides all the nutrients that the earth needs in order to keep it growing. So. Um, we won't need waters anymore, um, but th there will still be, you know, lakes and stuff like that because God's going to keep around fish and he's going to keep around all the things that he's created for the waters. But personally, I believe because because the seas are going to be, um, okay, that's a, uh, that's a whole new video. Uh, so, so anyway, um, God in all his, um, uh, 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 in all his infinite oneness will be providing everything that the, everything that the earth needs. So it'll be providing everything that the plants need in order to grow in terms of uh, moisture um, and in terms of the sun, because the sun is not going to be there. All the, all, all the things that, um, that come out of God will be even greater than the sun. It'll, it'll provide that much more nutrient to everything that is growing on the earth. <clears throat> so there'll be a new heavens and, the, and, and the new earth. And I think maybe I will kind of wind it down from there because um, uh, I would like to get into uh, the new earth that comes after the thousand years of peace. 
So basically, um, I will save that for another video, pray about that one. So basically, as I see um, the earth as it is, um, by the time we get to the earth where God is, um, that'll be the fourth and final earth. The first earth was the one that came, uh, that existed between Adam and Eve and the flood. The flood changed the first earth. So right now, we are living on the second earth. The second earth happened after the flood, and it'll change on the thousand years of peace. And then the, th the earth that is a thousand years of peace, that will be um, the third earth. And then after the thousand years of peace, God comes down and we get the fourth and final earth. And uh, you servants of the Lord will be able to see all that. Once you get to heaven as well, um, I'm sure there are places in heaven um, where God will allow you to see or be a part of the past. So you can see how everything was created. You can see exactly what dinosaurs were like. Um, and, 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 and you can see all the, all, all, all the various eras of mankind as they've grown up. That is, if, if that sort of thing interests you. Um, chances are, once you get to heaven, you're going to discover that there are far more things um, to do that are much more fun, um, that are much more enjoyable than thinking about anything from the past, um, especially past Earth. So anyway, um, you servants of the Lord have a lot to look forward to. So um, um, don't get discouraged. Uh, remember, like I said before, um, the longer um, the Lord uh, or, or, or the longer God puts off the tribulation period and the rapture, um, the more people there will be in the kingdom and the more people there will be in the other flock and the fewer people there will be um, during, the, uh, during the tribulation period. But the rapture will happen um, more sooner than later. We have no idea when. Um, we just know that it's going to happen when God says, uh, okay, now the time is right. Then he'll send his son out to come and get us. And it'll be a time when nobody's expecting it. Um, uh, that's, uh, I, I, I think that's about it for now. So um, until that day when we hear the trumpets, um, um, I guess uh, we will, I, I, I'll, I'll just say, uh, take care, stay in prayer. We will see you in Jesus' kingdom somewhere over there, or maybe even somewhere up in the air. Alrighty, um, we will see you at the Eastgate meetup. Um, we'll talk to you later. Um, I love you guys, um, and um, remember, Jesus rules.